Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm Richard Fields. On the program today, we have Fred Rouse, Tyler Kuski, Sam Warnkin, and uh, Zachary Moore. Welcome to the show. Uh, and we're on cable access uh, in Sacramento, Channel 17. We're at uh, www.accesssacramento.org on the uh, interweb, uh, on uh, YouTube, and on cable channels elsewhere across the, uh, the state and the country. Thank you very much for being here. Um, one of the big promises that was made back in 2008 and 2012 by uh, alt-right or uh, conservative types was that if uh, Obama got elected or re-elected, they were going to leave the country. Now, a bunch of people did go expat back in, back in 2008 and 2012. Uh, expatriation rates went up dramatically compared to what they had been prior to that. This last election cycle, a lot of uh, uh, alt-liberals, uh, people who are on the uh, <laughs> left, the uh, have uh, made the promise that they were going to Canada or or going to expat someplace else uh, if uh, Trump got elected, which of course uh, he did. Uh, I'm still holding my breath, waiting for some of them to leave, and I don't think it's yeah, happened yet. I hear Hollywood's vacant now. <laughs> Not quite, but uh, uh, it's a, it's an interesting concept. I, I you know as a I, I've never gone expat, but I've thought about it. I've looked at uh, properties in uh, Ecuador, in Panama, in uh, Costa Rica. Ultimately, I bought a couple of condos uh, in Belize on Amicus Key, and I go down and visit them every once in a while. In the meantime, I rent them out. I figure it's my uh, my uh, sound of music destination. If all the hell, if all go if all hell goes if everything goes to hell here in Austria, I've got a place to uh, escape to. Uh, but you have Sam uh, a lot of experience with the expat life. How many countries have you been a, a bona fide resident of? Well, I've, I've traveled to 18 countries and uh, you know numerous numerous countries been five times to them or so. So mm -hmm. I've spent a lot of time, uh, especially in South America. Okay. What countries, first of all? Oh, uh, what countries have you spent the most time in? Uh, Argentina, Colombia. Um, those are probably the big two. Okay. Argentina and Colombia. Uh, where, where in Argentina? Uh, Rosario is where I lived. Okay. And that's... Uh, this is the home of Che Guevara and uh, Lin, uh, Messi. So the famous, uh, okay. the famous soccer player. And where is that in a relationship to, say, Buenos Aires? It's or? just a few hours uh, drive, about a million people or so. Okay. Uh, and how about Colombia? Where, where in Colombia? Oh, I've been all over Colombia. I was doing some work there, and I just kind of continuously traveled around the country. Mm -hmm. So Medellin, Cali, Bogota, mm -hmm. um, Cartagena, Bar Barranquilla. Okay, so you were able to, uh, you, you said you were doing some work. You were able to yeah. figure out how to make a living uh, as yeah. an expat. How, what, what were you doing? Uh, exporting machinery. Exporting machinery from the U.S.? Yes, so usually, usually from the U.S. So you were, a, what, a, a dealer's or a manufacturer's rep, something like that? No, no. Uh, there is there's a continuous flow of uh, used machinery from the U.S. to the third world countries. Uh, for the simple reason, uh, we have extremely high labor costs. So something here that you, you know, people go, oh, throw that thing away, it's not worth anything. You can hire somebody for maybe $500 a month to fix in another country. So all of a sudden, its value you know, is still way up there in a third world country. Give me an example of the kind of machine you're talking about. Anything. Uh, generators. Uh, I was working a lot with cranes, cars, whatever piece of machinery. Copy machines, fax machines. Anything that gets worn, right. all of a sudden it's cheap to fix in a third world country. Okay. And you'll see, like, uh, you'll see something that may not be worth seven thousand dollars here be worth eighty thousand there. So not even just a little bit of price increase. So you're able to to you're kind of an import export. Then. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, how I I met somebody who was a, a, a crane repair mm -hmm. uh, technician, and he had all kinds of contacts. Mm -hmm. so, so. so you were able to buy in the states and yeah, then turn and, around and sell in yeah. Colombia or yeah. in Argentina. Yeah. You well, this this was I was just doing it in Colombia. What were you and, doing in Argentina? Uh, there had, uh, this was after their devaluation. I was uh, buying uh, buying land there and building house on it. Okay. And it was it was a very good time to, <laughs> to invest. <laughs> I think the uh, I, I wish I'd done nothing more than than buy land because land went from something like uh, uh, I think it was seven thousand dollars a lot to 
$27,000 a lot or something like that in five years. Well, you've watched some, uh, some pretty uh, dramatic uh, political changes in both Colombia oh, yeah. and in yeah. Argentina. Yeah. We, of course, have watched our own dramatic uh, political <laughs> changes. I, I saw an interview just uh, a few, just, I think it was just a few, not, not too long ago, uh, an interview of Edward Snowden and what he thought of the uh, election. And the, uh, the money quote was, you guys, you know, you worry way, I, I'm paraphrasing here, you worry way too much about who the president is. Uh, <laughs> It, makes no <laughs> it doesn't difference. make that much difference. Uh, is that the case in Argentina when uh, the, uh, who were the Peronistas that were running the place? I, f I forgot, uh, the, the woman. Uh, the, well, that's, that's uh, from my friends. Uh, you know, they just got a, a new, you know. Uh, Macri. Less not, yeah. Macri not, not has been. socialist yeah. uh, president. And they say, no, it looks like he's the same now. So new boss, same as the old boss? Yeah, same, you know, new guy, same old. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. So, so is is the 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 uh, corruption corruption continues and uh, things aren't getting better. And my, I, I had some friends who were who were telling me, uh, you know, like one of my friends just bought a shotgun. He said, I never thought I would have to buy a shotgun for my own defense here. And in you know, Colombia? No, this is in this is in Argentina. Argentina. Um, well, Argentina, I mean, as, as a, culturally, they're pretty much, a, you know, get along, you know, go along, get along, aren't they? Right, but the, the amount, but because, of, because of the horrible economy for so long, uh, mm. you know, you take people's jobs and money. And, and they've, they get they've desperate. Just, yeah. yeah, yeah, desperate people do desperate things. And he'd, he'd, been, uh, he'd been kidnapped and, uh, with his boss, and they were threatened, and, you know, had to go to the bank and get money out. Mm. You know, extreme. So, things. if you don't speak Spanish, I yeah, mean, would where do? would you go? Well, I mean, would you go Ar to New Zealand, Australia? Well, where would you go? It's a perfect example because it's amazing how many people learn English there. Uh, we had uh, there were a whole bunch when during their um, during their downturn, there was all kinds of uh, of uh, call centers for like uh, Microsoft. Uh, a couple of the big companies had call centers in Buenos Aires and. You got people who, you know, uh, I think they were paying people seven hundred dollars a month who were college educated, spoke English Passable and language. Spanish. Yeah, yeah, multilingual. Right. I think that would be the problem: is is finding that work if you're trying to, you know, leave the country. That would be the first thing would be to right. find work. And you know, you look at your, I guess, your hot destinations like a, a, a Europe. Um, you know, they with their socialist economies have made it so hard to find work in those countries. High unemployment. You know, they're not going to be too uh, keen for foreigners to come and take those jobs. And you mentioned New Zealand. I, I spoke to somebody who uh, took a tourist visa to New Zealand and it, it had her there for about three months over the summer and she snowboarded. And she indicated to me that all she would have, have to do while there on the tourist visa was to find somebody to sponsor her uh, work related, and then you could get a, an extension and you could get a visa and you could stay. So well, New, New Zealand has, a, has a, their own uh, uh, Expatriation problem. Uh, native New Zealanders trying to, you know, leaving a the brain leaving, drain. I think yeah, I've brain drain, it. leaving the island because like California, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, taxes are high. Yeah, or like England back in the 60s and 70s when they had a brain drain. Basically, it's a small island or two small islands, and people feel a little bit claustrophobic and want to get, you know, go to Australia or go to the states or whatever. So they, uh, New Zealand, is actively uh, encouraging younger, productive people to uh, to to move to Australia, to immigrate to, mm -hmm. to Australia. Quite the opposite of what the United States uh, is doing, or and, well, and exactly what on we, the surface, and exactly we, what we should be doing legally. Right. Uh, but uh, but then there are other countries, like you mentioned, Europe, where uh, they are you know not well. I take that back. They're encouraging They're an flooded. awful lot of uh, Syrians and uh, and people from North the Middle African. East to uh, North Africa right. to. To immigrate, I'm not sure what that's all about. That's true. Yeah, I, you know, it. I don't know. You sound like quite the entrepreneur, but finding a job like that. I mean, any any tips? Right. Well, the, <laughs> right, 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 how, how to get? We're all going, man. Well, the, well, the Argentina is, if, sounds. Yeah. Good. If there if there is a if there is an expat community and you speak Spanish, teaching Spanish. You know, focusing on the English. expats can be one of the best means because they're typically the wealthy people there. Um, other than that, you know, you have to have kind of independent, um, how would you say, location independent jobs, which is like internet, you know, something to do with the internet. Right. Or mine was just highly specialized. You know, I, you know, uh, how I started doing it, I met a, met a guy in a cyber cafe and he was, he was looking for stuff. And I'm like, why are you looking there? There are better places to get that stuff. And he's like, really? And he, you know, because he worked 
on all these machines all over the country. Uh, I ended up doing a deal with the biggest guy, in, uh, one of the biggest guys in transport in Colombia. And it's funny because Americans get instant respect in Colombia. Really? Because so, you know, uh, in, in a, lot of, a lot of countries, there's absolute corruption. And it's, it's uh, how would I put it? You do a deal and somebody runs away with the money is very, very common. And uh, Americans have a reputation of being honest. Not running away with the money. Yeah. You, you, they, always, you know, they may not give you what they promised, but they give you something. They never run away with the money. And, and that is such a, especially in Colombia, that's such an important thing because so much of your, your business, doing a business in Colombia is just making sure your, your own employees aren't stealing from you. Well, Colombia ha has had, uh, up until I, you know, very recently, a, a huge uh, narco-trafficking mm -hmm. uh, problem. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's absolutely changed. Like and and, uh, the, uh, and they, they came to a, a treaty of some sort with the, uh, the insurgents, the, the narco-traffickers or whatever. I'm not, FARC. I don't know the, yeah, FARC, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. But my understanding is that it was voted down in a referendum recently. So what, what's the upshot on, on all of that? Oh, well, to me, it's almost not so important because a long time before that, uh, like I, I, I went to Columbia when it was dangerous. Mm -hmm. And the thing you regularly don't see in the newspapers is it's 100% it's changed. I mean, what changed it? Uh, one president, Uribe. Uh, what did you do to change it? Uh, just specifically drove, uh, used the military to drive out um, the FARC. And like you'd see it. Dri drive them out? Yeah, what, drive them yeah, to the jungle? Just, what? just a dedicated... Well, they went to Bolivia and Ecuador. Or... Right. I, I've seen Colombians plying their trade in Paraguay because they were looking for new fertile grounds. Uh, just a concerted effort to drive them out. And, and it... Uh, looks like he had some history with the FARC to where he wasn't, uh, he wasn't untouchable, essentially. You know, he, he just wanted to get rid of the cancer in Colombia. Anyways, 90% uh, reduction in kidnapping and, and murder. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's going to change the country. But, it, you know, you just never saw it uh, reported. The only place I ever really saw it reported was The Economist. Yeah, yeah. So, Richard, you mentioned Costa Rica, Belize, Panama, there's Nicaragua, there's a lot of places in Central America that mm -hmm. expats are going. Mexico, of course. Yeah, Mexico. There's, Look yeah. there, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, Mexico, Mexico got, has its own uh, corruption problems, and yeah. so does... Uh, All of them. Uh, yeah, Costa Rica, to not a certain so extent. Uh, Panama, not so much. Uh, well, pa although, Panama and Costa Rica, they specifically made laws to... First, Costa Rica did it, but to attract rich, Oh, yeah, absolutely. Foreigners. Sure. Yeah, particularly in, 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 coast of, in the case of Costa Rica and, uh, and Panama, they're, they're looking for retirees. Yeah. They're looking for people who have a pension or have Social mm -hmm. Security or whatever, yeah. which, come on, come on with over. which you can Bring live very money. nicely uh, in mm -hmm. those countries because the cost of living is pretty low. Yeah, and uh, even Panama, they were allowing uh, people to use their, their uh, credit scores here to get bank loans uh, to buy houses there. Yeah, yeah. And they've, you know, in places like Boquete and yeah. uh, mm -hmm. uh, El Valle and, and other places, they've done a quite a bit of, uh, you know, built some pretty, you know, Western style or North American style uh, uh, communities. Yeah, that are Boquete's pretty, much pretty nice because it's just the right amount up the mountain to have the perfect the fog weather. Belt. So it's, yeah. it's not the it's not the Caribbean uh, torturous heat. Yeah, yeah, it's you know, it's it's a temperate uh, 70, 80 degrees pretty much year round. So it, it's you know, it's a nice climate. But anyway, yeah, I mean, that, that's, it's a great retirement place. I don't know that there's a, that much job opportunity in places like that for right. a younger person. Right. Well, that's, I mean, that's go to any place that's re for retirees, and yeah. it's not. Uh, yeah. Well, what, what are the, 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 uh, the practical you know, problems with, expiration, or with uh, expatriation? You've got, you've got a tax problem if you're from the States. You have to pay income tax on your income, whether it's earned. Uh, in Timbuktu or in in, uh, in Iowa, it doesn't make any difference. If you earned it, you pay U.S. income tax if you're a U.S. citizen. Mm -hmm. So if you don't if you don't want to pay the, pay income tax, the only way to get out of it, uh, as I understand it, is to say I'm not going to be a citizen anymore. In which case, you have to pay the equivalent of an estate tax on, on whatever oh. however much money you have. Yeah, I know uh, I know in um, in most countries, uh, you know it's it's a little bit like. Um, well, for example, Brazil, you know, there are laws, but they're more viewed as suggestions. Uh, they're like Italy? <laughs> I, well, I haven't been to Italy, but I, I just know, I, I remember once being in Brazil and some guy staggering out of a bar and waving to the cop and driving off. And, you know, it's... 
<laughs> you know, like people always talk about the, the corrupt cops in other countries. And I would much prefer the corrupt cops there because they don't, you know, they usually don't. Harass, first of all, they're not there. And second of all, everything's negotiable. And if you're I've had cops hit me up for money and I, no, I didn't do anything. I'm not paying. And they go away. I have, a, I have a funny story to tell about that. I was uh, driving back in the uh, early 90s. I was driving in Mexico, in Mexico City, and I got stuck in one of those uh, uh, circle Roundabout. thing, roundabouts. Couldn't figure out where I was going. Uh, a foot cop, pedestrian cop, pulls me over, you know. So I stop like a dumbhead, and, uh, and he wants to, uh, he says, I, I've, I've committed an infraction. He could get the word infraction out. And he had, you know, he want, I had, and so I ended up paying him 20 or $30, because I didn't know any better. Same thing happened uh, uh, maybe five years ago. I was driving in Mexico City, driving from the airport, and uh, uh, a cop, same thing, pedestrian cop, pulled me over and was try, you know, trying to do the same shakedown. Yeah. My wife, who's an attorney, said, what's your badge number? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, oh, never mind, never mind. Right. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of cops way. are, uh, the best term I've heard it is an independent contractor. <laughs> And to, to me, there's the one thing a lot of people don't realize is there's, there's actually a functional dynamic in it. Okay, they largely don't get paid. Uh, salary. For, yeah. Right, for salary. So they, they, tips. You, they you, need you, tips. Right. You, you, <laughs> they work you on tips. To. But now, on the other hand, uh, if he comes to me and says, you know, oh, you did this. I'm going to you know, find you for that. And I go, I didn't do anything. Fine, give me the ticket. I'm going to pay it at the office. You don't get anything. So that's the other hand. They can't be lying about what they, what they do because they won't get any money. And there's always the, well, I kind of did something and you kind of, so let's negotiate down at least. So this, this is the whole dynamic that we don't realize because we're used to, okay, you did something wrong, here's your ticket. What that, about could, the that could be better. I mean, you, you, know, you, go to, you, know, you go down to the superior court, you go down to the traffic court. These big buildings, all these police officers around there, all these government officials. So and, official. Yeah, and they're going to, you know, they're going to fleece you. You know, right. you're going to have to pay right. this big uh, number. You pay your fines, but then there's all these fees attacked on top of it. And you're paying that no matter what. And it sounds like in this situation, there might be a way to at least reduce your, your burden there a little yeah, bit. You can, yeah, you can, and, you can and, plea bargain and, there. And you did, he did catch you doing something wrong. It's taken care of right on the spot. Well, let me ask you this question. Uh, you're a young guy. You probably don't have medical problems. But if you did have medical problems, uh, in the United States, we have the FDA and the uh, AMA, I, I and we have Western medicine. I can afford and, the very and, and, best. And, and you know, the best medicine in the world here in the U.S. Well, is that the case? Well, so, so many of these, my tongue is in my cheek. So but is that the case in, 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 the, in, in the South America, Central oh, America? So many of these, you can, you can get a U.S. trained doctor there, and you can now, for less, for say, a the fraction, same or a fraction a or less, of the cost. what you get here, you can get the very best. The very best. Right. So I, I and why is that? Um, why is it that the cost of good medicine uh, in Latin the America US. Uh, yeah. is, is so much less than it is in the U.S.? Well, I mean... The, Particularly when the doctors are trained in the U.S. in many cases. Right. The, well, the bottom line is uh, lower overall costs for everything. Um, you know, a taxi costs less, food costs less. Um, but, but like I say, and I, I almost think part of it, too, is uh, they're even starting to specifically cater to... Um, to medical American, tourism. Yeah, med medical tourism, yeah. for sure. And their governments probably aren't, like our government, pumping just endless amounts of money into oh. those sectors. Well, yes, yeah, see, the reason that education and health care cost so much in this country is because it's so heavily subsidized. I mean, it's clear. Yeah. The more money the government pumps into any particular industry, the higher prices are going to go, and the more we're all going to end up paying for education and health care. Yeah. I should mention LASIK was invented in Colombia. Really? Yeah. I'll be darned. Yeah. I didn't know that. So, I'll, take so a, I'll take a trip immediately. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Where they invented it. Those glasses look really good on you, though. Are you sure you want to give <laughs> up those glasses? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'll have to ask you. What do you think? I've, I, I had LASIK maybe 20 years ago, and I'm wearing glasses again because uh, it wears off after a while. Oh. So, that's unfortunate. So, yeah. Yeah. What can I say? Although I can still see better without glasses than I could before I uh, had the LASIK done. But. Well, it's, and it's improving over time, too. Technology definitely could helps be. with it. That could very well can be. Can you get it again? And it is one of those elective surgeries that actually costs have...
declined for LASIK, for plastic surgery, the stuff that's not covered by big money insurance plans, the costs have actually decreased. Well, yeah, I mean, I was time. I was in Ecuador in a in a in a uh, started out on the coast. My wife picked up a a bug, a stomach stomach bug of some kind or another, sick to her stomach and whatnot. And we went up into a mountain town, and uh, we're staying in a hotel. That's when that's when the, she got you know she knew she was sick. At like midnight on a Friday night, the uh, hotel owner of the hotel called her personal doctor. The personal doctor made a house call, mm -hmm. hotel call, yeah. and gave her a ride, her and me a ride in his personal car to hospital number one, which was full. So she went to hospital number two, got her, got her checked in yeah. to a very nice suite. Uh, did uh, you know all of the usual tests? IV, IV, you know yeah. the, the, yeah. everything that you would expect. Everything you would expect. It was uh, like two hundred and fifty bucks. It was one hundred and thirty-five. <laughs> that in included the doctor. Yeah. That included, would be five, ten grand. Here. It, the doctor, right. the oh, you know, the house call, the the hospitalization, the, the the you know the drugs that you had to take, everything. Well, you know, and one one aspect is I. And I think this this makes a big difference. Uh, like when you look at countries like uh, Argentina, they have a very. Uh, I, I love Argentina because the people are so hospitable. You know, it's the only place I've known where somebody who's poor would give you the shirt off their back and not ask you for anything in return. So there's this very generous, people-focused culture. They're and, idiots. No, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. No. But, uh, but that that comes out in medicine. You know, here, you know, if you have somebody who's really worried about money, uh, rush them through. Yeah. Yeah. Next, next. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not making enough cash today. Whereas there, you know, how are you doing? Yeah. You know, I'm, I just called to check up. Is everything going okay? And so you have this, the right attitude for uh, medical care. I think. Well, let me. You're back in Dixon now. Let me ask you the uh, the, uh, the the bottom line question. You've lived in Colombia, you've lived in Argentina, and 16 other countries, and you know, now you're back in the States. What's the best thing to do for ultimate personal, personal happiness? Move to another country where you've got more freedom, at least in some respects, or stay here and try to fix things? Oh, well, it's, it's the insane man who tries to change the world to his likes. Um, but it, you, you have to know what you like and then find it. And sometimes that will be in another country. Like one of the things I say often is uh, the happiest Americans I know are usually the you know, people who've saved money here and have gone to South America and they live like kings. You know, an executive there often only makes $1,000 a month. You know, it's, it's peanuts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and some of the happiest people are here are the Latins who've come here. Well, they've got their customs of how to interact positively and enjoy the environment. And now they're earning as much as we are. So it's not always the place, you know, it's, it's your skills matched with your environment. Okay, well, that's an interesting concept. Match your skill with the environment and, uh, uh, and you know, and take, take the right attitude wherever Don't you worry, go. be happy. <laughs> 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 okay, we talked a little bit about, how much time do we have left? Five minutes, okay. We have, uh, we've talked a little bit about medicine in third world countries. One of the reasons why we have a high cost of medicine in the States is because we have cartelized it to a large extent. We license doctors, uh, we make them go to school for ungodly periods of time. We make it really, really, really difficult to get a drug approved. It's much more difficult to get a drug approved in the States than it is in pretty much any other country in the world. Uh, does licensing doctors, highly regulated uh, uh, FDA regulation of drugs, et cetera, does that make medical care better or does it just create a bad monopoly? I think it creates a bad monopoly. Uh, you know, when anytime you have a licensing scheme, you know, it creates a barrier to entry. And there's a lot of good doctors out there, or people that would have been good doctors, that <clears throat> for whatever reason couldn't get into the the field because of these barriers to entry, because of the expense, the the fear of taking on all the debt, um, and they just don't have access to the resources. One simple thing is um, taking the pre medical exams or the pre-graduation school exams or the pre-law school exam, the LSAT, you know, those in itself cost, you know, thousands of dollars in order to be competitive and getting those competitive scores. And if you don't have access to that capital right away before you want to start that, that career path, you can't even get in the door or your, your chances are going to be much worse. And that's all rooted in this licensing system where you have to go 
to approve schools um, in order to get that license. And so it is a barrier to entry, and I think it probably has made things worse when it comes to quality and has made things more expensive. Um, what are the real incentives in Western medicine, and how do, they, how, do, how do the incentives in Western medicine compare with the incentives in, say, more traditional uh, uh, Asian, Chinese medicine, uh, acupuncture, that sort of thing, or traditional tribal me uh, medicine that you'll find in, in Africa or in, in the, the outback of uh, Australia or uh, uh, South America? You know, to me, uh, you know, I remember, I've, uh, I've changed my, my mind a lot about Native Americans because I, I realize so much of what we've seen about them is probably 95% written, um, directed by the winners. Not, yeah, not Native Americans. Um, I, uh, uh, to me, I believe there was almost a Darwinian selection uh, among Indians because if if your tribe didn't have a good set of uh, of uh, medical practices, they'd be driven out of existence. So a doctor, it wasn't just you know here. If you go to a doctor and he treats you and it doesn't work. Usually you go back, don't you? So he's just been paid twice for for failure. Whereas you look at a Native American tribe, and the the punishment for failure is often you die, your tribe dies, your children die. You know, there's a very very harsh punishment. Um, one one of the surprising things I read in China, um, and somebody else who who'd lived there told me it was true, uh, was in China they had the practice of paying your doctor while you were healthy, and you stop paying him when you're sick, and then he, attend, <laughs> and then he attends to you. There, is a, there are uh, medical practices in the States that do that, are there not? Yeah. I'm not well, sure if they, well, you H stop paying them when you're, when you're well, sick. The HMO you know, Kaiser's model is based on minimizing expenses by promoting preventive health Right, but there are, outside of Kaiser and HMOs, there are, uh, there are uh, individual doctors who put together a practice and, where... And I don't think they even uh, teach... It's subscription-based. ...nutrition or exercise. They don't teach those things in no. medical school. You don't become an expert in diet or, you know, how to exercise and how to, you know, burn No, the entire model fat. is allopathic well, medicine. Yeah. Treat the symptoms with a drug, and then those drugs have side effects, and those side effects can cause further... And I think you can Symptoms. take some other drugs for those side effects. Yeah, too. and it's if you've ever an, seen a commercial. It's a, no. it's a, right. it's a, um, the mouse on the wheel is dispensing drugs to all of us, and we've the pharmaceutical companies are getting paid for giving us poison, basically that um, alters our physiology. We always like to go out on a high note. High note, poison. That's that's high. <laughs> poison. So, poison. Yes. We'll we'll end it there. That's the show this week. We'll see you again next week, same time, same place, on the Libertarian Counterpoint. www.accesssacramento.org, Channel 17, YouTube, and cable channels elsewhere. Thank you very much for being part of the show. See you again next week. Thank you.